سلاح ولو كان كاسرا للتوازن ليش ما كسر التلفزيون الدهور؟ أنا مع المصلحة الوطنية Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Future TV. I'm Linda Tamim and these are today's top stories. Members of a parliamentary subcommittee tasked with studying law proposals resume their work with MPs voicing mixed views on whether consensus can emerge over a hybrid voting system. The UN General Assembly votes to pass a resolution condemning the Syrian government for human rights violations and calls for a transitional government. And Myanmar is evacuating thousands of people in preparation for Cyclone Mahasin, which already hit Bangladesh's low-lying coast. Members of the parliamentary subcommittee tasked with studying law proposals have resumed their work with MPs voicing mixed views on whether consensus can emerge over a hybrid voting system for the upcoming elections. During the subcommittee meeting, Speaker Nabih Bedi also handed lawmakers a new proposal that would see half of parliament elected on the basis of the orthodox gathering format and the other under a winner-takes-all system with Lebanon divided into 26 districts. Bedi had adjourned a legislative session de de dedicated to examining the orthodox gathering proposal after the March 14 alliance, along with the Progressive Socialist Party, put forward a hybrid electoral law making it impossible for the controversial March 8 backed voting system to pass. Lebanese Forces MP Georges Adouane, speaking ahead of today's subcommittee meeting, was downbeat over the chances of reaching a common stance over the hybrid formula. MP Ali Fayyad from Hezbollah's loyalty to the resistance parliamentary bloc told reporters that his group had many reservations over the proposed hybrid draft law. He added his bloc will only endorse an amended form of the draft law. Free Patriotic Movement MP Ibrahim Kanaan said his party will boycott Parliament should it put the hybrid proposal up for a vote. Kitab leader Amin Jmail says the hybrid elec election proposal backed by most of the March, March, March 14 coalition is far from finishing and a, sh a short extension of Parliament's term is needed to reach the agreement. The Kitab leader says he expects a technical delay in Parliament to give political rivals more time to reach a new electoral law that gains broad approval. Prime Minister-designate Tamam Slam has denied that the March 14 alliance and Saudi Arabia were dictating, him, were dictating him on the formation of the new government. In remarks to a Safir Daily, Salam said he will not respond to any accusation and will not bicker with anyone. He added a campaign was launched against him that he sought to form a de facto government at a time when he was holding consultations with different parties and hadn't taken any decision. He reiterated that he will not take any unilateral decision and will not form any government behind the back of the main political parties. He also said a neutral cabinet and rotation in portfolios were beneficial for future governments. Salam stressed on the formation of a trustworthy cabinet that includes non-party members who are not proactive, provocative figures and not running in the elections. Italian Defense Minister Mario Mauro has lauded the role played by President Michel Sliman to distance Lebanon from the region's crisis. A statement issued by the presidency said Mauro, who visited Sliman at Babda pa Palace, praised Sliman for abiding by the Babda Declaration, a document adopted by rival Lebanese leaders last year pledging to stick to the dissociation policy. The discussions between Sliman and Mauro also focused on the cooperation between the two countries and the influx of Syrian refugees to Lebanon. The visiting defense minister also met with Premier-designate Tamam Slam and Army Chief General Jean Ahwaji. Reports say his talks with Ahwaji focused on the general situation in Lebanon and the region and ways to improve military cooperation between the two countries, mainly in the fields of training and logistics. The UN General Assembly has voted to pass a resolution condemning the Syrian government for human rights violations and called for a transitional government. The measure was approved by a vote of 107 to 12, with 59 member states abstaining. Russia fiercely opposed the resolution as a potential obstacle to peace talks. The resolution strongly condemns the government of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad on two points, the escalation of heavy weapons on civilian areas and what Qatar which drafted the statement calls systematic violations of human rights. 
Today's resolution expresses grave concern that the Syrian government is using chemical weapons and calls for unfettered access to UN investigators. It also pushes against a Syrian-led political transition with the opposition Syrian National Coalition as the representatives of the Syrian people. Regional news, a group of unidentified gunmen have kidnapped seven Egyptian security forces in the Sinai Peninsula near the border with Israel. Sources say three policemen and four army, army officers who were riding in taxis traveling from Arish to Rafah cities, both in North Sinai, were stopped by armed men on, and kidnapped on Wednesday. Police confirmed later today that one abductee was released and arrived at one of the security forces offices to relay the kidnappers' demands. It was still not yet clear who was behind the operation on their motives. A car bomb has exploded in a busy market in southern city, in the northeast of Baghdad, killing at least six, six people. Police said nearby houses and shops were damaged in the blast and windows were shattered by this shockwave. The blast was one of the three to hit markets in Baghdad and a second bomb explo is exploded in another city in Sadr City, while a third targeted a small market in Kamaliya district. Police and medical officials said at least 14 people were killed in the three blasts and the series of blasts came after attacks in the north of Baghdad killed more than 35 people yesterday. Iran says it is willing to work together with the International Atomic Energy Agency and continue to finalize a nuclear inspection framework. Iran's envoy to the UN nuclear agency, Ali Ashgar Sultaniye, told reporters after a meeting in Vienna that no concrete deal was made at the meeting between Iran and the IAEA, and both sides have given proposals and will try to reach consensus. ...of the previous discussion, uh, we were able to identify some of the elements that we need to work out together. In fact, uh, both sides gave a written proposals uh, uh, on those points, and uh, we decided that both sides will uh, use uh, the time from now until next meeting to work out uh, on the language which will uh, bridge the gap for uh, ultimate conclusion of this uh, structured approach. In fact, nuclear energy and nuclear policy of Iran is a, a national agenda, and there is a consensus, national consensus on nuclear energy. And uh, it is not really functioning of the election development. Therefore, uh, no matter what, uh, we'll continue our work with the agency, and of course, our nuclear activities and nuclear policy based on some principles uh, which Iran has always reiterated that we will not compromise on those principles, this will continue. Well, coming up next, Hollywood actor Leonardo DiCaprio raises the curtain of the 66th Cannes Film Festival. That and more after the break. <laughs> 